any deaths and you might not even have any assists. Your job is basically to zone everyone away, give a lot of space for your own team, and then just let your team do all the work. And then you're just clearing minions on the opposite side of the map. So I don't know, for EXP laners, we can talk about how good they are, but bringing in numbers kind of is tricky. It's very tricky. Yeah, that is un unless your name is Moo. He is, <laughs> he, he is different, all right? He's on my dream team for a reason. He's different. He's built, he was born, and he was molded differently by James. Well, let's hope that these teams can start to be built a little bit differently going into game number two. Homeboys, they did a pretty good job last game, but it definitely could have been cleaner in terms of execution. And Homeboy and the R and RNG Sports, they need to start shifting a little bit in terms of their strategy. How do they want to approach this? Because unfortunately, their strategy from game one wasn't as effective as they had hoped. Well, I'm thinking we're not going to see a 1-1 for this game. So that in itself will be good. Today, a lot of 1-1 has gotten a lot of victories. Looking at the Akai, if any of the teams will try to take the Akai if it's if it's available for them. And Chibi Chibi has a lot of options. I do, I do want to see what Orange Sport want to do in terms of the bans. Because I feel like if they could target anyone, it really should be between... Chibi or Expedia because so far Expedia his hero pool has been kind of <laughs> off. Either way, right now Orange Sport with ban on the Diggy, kind of smelling something like a like an Atlas or an Akai. Yeah, with the Diggy banned out, a very obvious choice from Orange Esports is that they want to go for that Akai. So they're challenging the homeboys to say like. Do you want to ban this? If you ban the Akai, then we can one, pick one. up the Julian or the one one, and that's what they want because we know that balance. He likes that one one as well. I kind of feel like this is one of the situations. Ban not the Akai because there's a one one, there's a Julian. If you get either of them, it's honestly a very very good, uh, good good opportunity for you to really set up your drive because yes, one one is very strong, but in this season, one one has already received the loss. I actually think it's safer to ban the one one here, right? Because I know we've been talking about a Kai. Oh, leaving it all open, which means homeboys will have the advantage. They will have two good heroes. Indeed, RNG Sports will probably want to pick up that one one because. Balance can make a lot happen with it, but because of that, homeboys would have the option to grab the Akai and the Julian for themselves, two very strong utility heroes. The choice is up to Orange. If they want to grab one of those instead, the 1-1 one -one goes over to a nip again, and well, that didn't work out for them in oh, game dude. one. Balance. Valence is, is crazy on one one. Yeah, I kind I kind of feel like you know just 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 give it give it to Valence and whatever happens happens. So yeah, Valence will get his one one. I feel like um, Chibi could play the Akai, especially with Diggy not being there. Not a lot of heroes can can really stop him. Indeed, Orange Esports actually using the dig banning out the B Diggy just to set up for this 1-1 one -one is pretty I big brain there. Julian is a pretty a obvious weapon. choice for the side of the homeboys, but the big question is whether or not he's going to be a mage or perhaps played by Chibi in the jungle. We will find out. They still have another choice. And honestly, oh wait, look, oh, Eve? Eve, right? They're actually going to skip over Akai completely. Oh. They might want that real world manipulation. I don't know if, if this is good because the Akai can cancel out the real world manipulation. The fans are restless right now. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm opening one of my my hands because I want to know. Like, is that a good reaction? Is that a is that a bad reaction? What's going on? But yeah, like let's talk about this because the Eve can be cancelled out by the Akai. That's the first problem. And the Akai has been picked up, so that's probably what's gonna happen over here. And the second thing is, homeboys, they basically threw away their surprise element. You were gonna ask. Where is this Julian going? Is it the jungle? Is it the mid? Is it possibly an EXP? At least now we know it's not a mid lane Julian. I think that it will most likely be a jungle Julian as well. This doesn't really feel like the type of hero you'd usually expect Sabat to play. And I think Orange Esports are aware of that as well, which is why they're still going to prioritize the Esmeralda just to make sure that Sabat doesn't have this comfort pick. But personally, I'm a little bit sad to see Orange grab it because I feel like Neo does his best work when he's on an aggressive EXP laner. I still remember the days when he he used heroes like the Benedetta. Like it is mm. it's, it's, it's crazy. Like 
Neo could create chaos. I feel like if, if he kept on playing those kind of heroes, that would be his his name. Neo the Chaos Maker. And right now, Beatrix is going to get picked up by Anip. And, and this is one of Anip's signature heroes as well. If it's not Beatrix, if it's not the 1-1, one he will probably go for his son. But now with the Beatrix here, homeboys, the drop is looking pretty good. It's just that for the side of Orange Esports, however, they have a lot of answers. So homeboys is providing the questions, Orange providing the answer. If Orange wins this one, they have a lot of, like, I'm not too superstitious, but again, worst team wins, loses the series. Whoever gets the Akai, they win. The I'm just Your saying, doesn't look good for homeboys. Well, I'm sure the homeboys and their fans are hoping that this trend will be broken right now. As the second phase of bans is going to start, we can see that they are banning out the Lilia. So far, we have seen in terms of matchup, Eve will usually lose the mid lane to Lilia. Understandable that they would want to get rid of it to make sure that Vince can make an impact. One big difference between this game and the previous one as well is that unlike previously, Huh? There is no real big bulky tank hero that wants to stand in front against the 1-1. One -one. It's actually quite difficult to proc that crossbow of tank with any of the heroes Homeboys is showing right now. Right now, Orange is batting out the Selena again. If they bat out the Natalia, it almost shows that Expedia can only use Assassin Roamers. Mm. Because again, Expedia hasn't really shown any tanky heroes because oh, even just now he used the Matilda homeboys they ban out the Sicilian I think that's a very good uh, very good ban because the Sicilian could be a big problem for their entire lineup but this kind of shows Expedia might have a obvious weakness well, I think we also have to remember that back when he used to play with Team SMG, one of his signature picks was the Cho. He actually did a pretty good job with it as well. So I don't think it's quite right to say he can only play these sort of assassin roamers. But so far, he hasn't really shown a large hero pool here in Season 10. So I suppose we will find out whether or not he still reprises those comfort picks. And I, I and I kind of was hoping for Selena going on to aim just because again he used to be a mid laner. He's pretty good on a Selena. And Orange Esports they have the advantage of having two tanky heroes. So you don't necessarily need aim to be a tanky hero unless aim is going on to the Akai. Hmm, that is possible as well. The thing about the side of Orange Esports is that Subway. We, again, haven't gotten to see a lot of his gameplay, even though he was part of Team SMG last season. So we don't know what kind of heroes he could play. Can he play the Akai jungle? It's possible, but we cannot say for sure. So unless the homeboys have some insider information, that's going to be difficult to really tell. Yeah, the only time we see Subway play is on the link. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the only information we have based on MPL. Right now, homeboys, the time is ticking down. What hero are they going to pick up Your right now? It looks like they're going to pick up the Ooh. Lolita. Pretty solid, I would say. A very good AoE engage hero, making it so strong. Paired up with, with the Eve. Just that Numinum Blast, real manipulation. It's a real Numinum Blast. And if we can combo it with the enhanced chain from the Julian as Ooh. well, that would be pretty devastating. Not to mention the AoE ultimates from Beatrix. Homeboys are going to be gearing up for big team fight combinations, but it all depends on whether or not they can pull them off. Remember, there is a heavy spin on the opposite side. Oh, and a uh, Halbert and a Kadita. Is this going to be Ames Kadita or Stormy's Kadita? Like, which one is this? That's a good question. Considering that Aim is playing on the Roamer, that means that he is most likely going for the Akai instead. Subway taking a page out of Gary's style. Going for the Hellcurt here, not a bad option because homeboys want to have vision over the battlefield to really make their plays and that Dark Knight Falls could be a big Battle factor the for them. Team. Homeboys, Hunter. the final pick gonna come out and it is the Hayabusa, yet another classic Chibi signature. And the fans are liking it because again, whenever Chibi uses an assassin, we know a lot of flashy plays is gonna come in. Now, this Hellcurt Stormy? Wait, really? Are 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 they not changing that? Wait, wait. Like, it, it could change in game, but if this is going to be the situation, Stormy, a KDA god with a mage, is he going to use a mid lane assassin or, God help me, he's gonna be the jungler? 
I don't know. I, I'm very curious to find out once we enter the land of dawn. But if aim is on that Kadita, it's definitely a much more comfortable hero pick for him compared to the Ruby. Let's see if this adjustment is what RNG Sports is looking for to take a game against the homeboys. Remember, this is RNG Sports' debut match here in Season 10. They want to make a lasting impact. Focus player is definitely Stormy. I gotta say, Stormy is in my dream team, and I did say based on his performance, I might or might not change it. If he is on this Hellcurt and they win, he's staying there. Oh he's staying there! Stormy is using Hellcurt! What? Stormy is on Hellcurt with Killing Spree and Petrified. What? I don't know what the plan is here. Mid lane Hellcurt. This is interesting. You know what? Today is a good day. Today is a good day to be an MLBB fan. And right now, Storming is getting harassed by Expedia on this Lolita, which, again, is a little bit easier to execute. Aim right now on the Kadita. For the side of Orange Esport, they're really focusing on the damage. Subway and Neo, they're the only ones that can really peel for their team or just be, be a, a, a... I don't know. I'm, I'm smiling. I'm grinning. I, think I, I almost, I, I kind of hope Orange will win because I want to see more of this. We're definitely fumbling over our words a little bit because words cannot describe how we are feeling about this. There's weird hero picks and then there is this. <laughs> In terms of emblems, nothing too strange from either side here. And this is actually a sub pot Julian in the XP lane too. Yeah, and I gotta say, uh, Stormy on his health crit, no points on the movement speed. He's focusing on physical attack as well as penetration. So perhaps at level four with the Dark Knight Fall, they could execute a kill. And right now they're going oh, for a kill. What? I just thought about it. This is a good cast of curse. First blood going over to Stormy, my boy. Well, the, the mid lane Hellcurt already working. A nice two man breath of the ocean forces out the Purify from Vins. Heavy spin, pinning Expedia to the wall, getting the flicker out as well. One ultimate for two battle spells. Yeah, right now, Stormy, again, like, this is crazy. Oh, but the chain oh. hits, but no knockoff. Stormy is going to go down by Chibi. A very good return kill for the side of Homeboys. If this game is going, like, how it's been going today, we're going to see yo-yoing in terms of the gold advantage. I'm not sure if my voice will be able to take more of that yo-yoing here, but we're going to try our best. Right now, Homeboy's a slight advantage. Rough Wave's nearly taking out Expedia, but not quite enough. What I am curious about is who actually has the Rome Boots right now, because AIM is actually slightly higher level than Stormy. One of them needs to have the Rome Boots, right? Um... Yes, I would like to see now that you now that you mention it. That is very very interesting. It can't be Subway just because he has the retribution. If you have a retribution, you can't have the Rome boots. It's not near or balance. What if what if something crazy and they both don't have it right now? Subway is gonna get focused down, but it looks like he's taking a lot of damage, and this is gonna be a free kill going over to the side of Orange. Stormy secures it for themselves. Another kill going over to the mid lane Hellcurt. I don't know what the plan is with this, but it is certainly working right now. Subway going to try and take the orange buff. Heavy spin, I believe. Yes, he did secure that with the retribution pushing Chibi away. So that's going to give the Akai a little bit of an EXP boost. I will try to figure out what is up with this draft, but forgive me for now. I kind of want to just shut down my brain and just enjoy whatever is happening here on screen. Again, I'm a professional ca uh, caster, no biasness, Orange and Homeboys. Both of these teams are performing very, very well right now. Vince on this Eve, he can do a lot of setup, especially like we, we talked about, right? Today, we saw a lot of good plays. We saw four men knocks up, uh, knock ups and, and, and stuff like that. So for the side of Homeboys, they have a lot of potential to really win, especially because they are a team that, that's known to be like the kings of the river. And with this kind of with this kind of draft, having the Lolita, having the Julian, having the Eve, they are they are river masters. Yeah, Homeboys has a really strong team fight combination, and their scaling is pretty solid as well. But we have to remember, Valence is on the one one right now. Valence at the top of the goal ranking, followed by Stormy, the Hellcurt, doing a lot of work, and Dark Knight falls, pinning a nip to the wall. Stormy picks up another kill on the Homeboys' goal laner. Now the stun from Expedia. He wants to delay their retreat. Subway alone by himself will be able to dash over the wall, but the real woman Manipulation doing a lot of damage with the Oki Shadow kill, picking. Up Subway as a revenge kill. 
Yeah, Chibi right now is actually performing very well on this Hayabusa because this is what you need to do. As a Hayabusa, you cannot lose in terms of goal or in terms of EXP. Right now, Orange Sport, they have a, a, a definite goal advantage, 1.4 thousand gold lead. But for the side of Homeboys, Chibi is still doing well. However, his level is a little bit lower than, than the Subway. He needs to get those kills. Right now, he has the Hunter Strike, so he needs to catch someone off guard. Stormy setting up the kill. Oh, Aim doing a lot of damage with the rough ways, but not enough to finish off Expedia. Numan and Blast gonna catch out the Kadita. Uh, Aim is going to drop, but in exchange for the turtle, that's not too bad. TB taking a lot of damage, not quite enough to finish him off with a heavy spin as he jumps back in with the Ogi Shadow Kill. Stormy already taken out. TB finally will go down to Subway, but they got the turtle and they got two kills in return. Questionable decision coming in for the side of Chibi. I understand that Hayabusa, his passive is he has native spell vamp. So when he, when he does execute his kills, especially his shuriken, he can spell them quite a bit. However, he went in and he Ogi shadow killed instantly. Of course, using the iframe to survive is great. I think he overestimated his own damage output and not respecting enough what Subway can do. And we talked about this where Akai, he can cancel out the real world manipulation vince did not die he was able to escape with his with his life but he should keep that mental note when he does use his ultimate where is subway do not get stopped by him and also be aware of the petrify because we saw any kind of initiation coming in from the side of homeboys they will get insta stunned and then and then Orange Esports will just re-engage. Indeed, that's going to be the goal for Orange Esports mainly. They want to make sure that Vince isn't able to use that ultimate. But so far, the EVE has been doing a pretty good job of positioning themselves. Right now, we can see AIM targeting Expedia yet again. Unfortunately, going for the Lolita is not really recommended here because we've already seen that Rough Waves isn't enough to get that one-shot kill. But to conceal play, they may be looking for Vince here. Yes, and see, since AIM was the one that used the conceal, He's the one that got the He boots. has the boots. He was actually higher level than Stormy for a moment there. Probably because the Hellcat got taken out quite early on. And right now on the top side, we can see how Orange Esports, they're trying to get a kill over here. And somebody's going to go down to Neo. They're going to focus on the top lane turret. And Neo, unfortunately, did not manage to catch Vince. Anip destroyed the bottom lane turret. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, it does look like a skirmish is happening. Valance and AIM dropping real low to the Oki Shadow Kill, forcing out the rough waves for the Kadita to survive. But no casualties on the side of Orange. It does look like with this Hellcurt mid, they're going for a really fast-paced, heavy kill type snowball team comp. So Stormy needs to make sure to keep his kill count up. Here comes GB once again. Valance taking a lot of damage. Subway secures the turtle, but the one one has been taken out. And Heavy Spin, not enough to push Expedia into the tower. Yes, that was very unfortunate. Subway could not really push them away. And right now, for the side of homeboys, they're pressing a lot in mid. Chibi dishing out a lot of damage. Look at Expedia. Not hitting. Oh, never Ooh. mind. He managed to hit Subway. And Subway taking a lot of damage right now. Vince managed to get a kill. No double kill onto Anip. Homeboys, the kings of the river, is controlling the mid side. This is what we talked about earlier. Vince just needs to wait until that heavy spin is down. And then he can pop the real world manipulation to control the arena. And that meant that Orange Esports were at Homeboys' mercy. But Dark Knight falls. Falls again. A nip going to be the target. But the knockoff from Enhanced Chain and ensures that the Beatrix will survive. So Stormy will take Vince as a consolation prize as Neo continues searching for the Beatrix, but Expedia is there to stop him. Right now, looking at both both gold leaders, they're not doing so well. Looking at the itemization over here, even though AIM is the roamer, he has the roam boost just because Subway and Neo is in the game, he's focusing on damage. He just finished his Clock of Destiny and it looks like he's going for a Genius 1 build. And for the side of Stormy, a lot of damage in in terms of penetration, he has the Malefic Roar and he has the Demon Restored. So anyone that is tanking in front, he's going to kill them. And I feel like it is mainly focusing in case Expedia overextends. But right now, Expedia is playing a little bit better. 007 on this Lolita. Yeah, I think he's much more comfortable on these tankier initiator type roamers. And he's definitely making that known. But the same can be said for AIM on heroes like the Kadita. He's managing to set up a lot of kills for the rest of Orange Esports. As we can see up here in the top lane, Expedia looking for Valence, but Orange is here to make sure that the one one can continue farming. Yeah, because as you said, Orange is for they kind of want to pick up the pace. They want to pick up the tempo where, oh, it looks like a lot of damage Ooh. has been done. But Chibi did not get a kill. A very clutch rough waves. It's not, it's definitely going down. 
Ooh, but Sabat gets found out by Neo in the bush. Falling Star Moon expanded to try and take as much HP as possible. Homeboys, they definitely recognize the risk of the rough ways being used for aim to escape, but I think they're okay with that. Dark Knight falls pop. Stormy looking for a nip. A nip trying to dash away, but the instant shutdown, the malefic roar going to be enough to just completely decimate that Beatrix and Sabat forced to escape from Subway. That was unfortunate because actually Anip, he was in the safety of the bush, but then he dashed out. Making it easy for Stormy to get the kill. That kill was definitely Ooh. not needed. And speaking of not needed, Chibi, you gotta go home. Aim secures the kill. That's a difficult wall dimension to actually pin the Hayabusa to there. Well played by Subway, finding the pin and setting it up for Aim. Right now, Orange Esports, their high kill count lineup is working for them, but definitely not having as much of an advantage as I think they would hope to get. And right now, Aim going for XP that oh. dashes back. But look at Ani, Ani managing to get a kill, but focusing on the Lord. Who's securing the Lord? It's going to be Subway. Subway securing it for themselves. But Vince opening up. And look at Stormy. Stormy did not manage to go in because he was stunned by the real world manipulation. I was really smart by Expedia actually, flickering backwards with the Numenon Blast to ensure that he's not only not disrupted, but setting himself at an angle to find two stuns on Orange Esports and getting the kill onto AIM. Right now, we can see that the Lord is pushing up mid, but Homeboys is... Oh my goodness, when did that happen? Story takes out TB 1v1 in the top lane, so even though they lose the Lord at mid, the Hellcurt is pushing up top. Right now with a KDA of 6-2-2, two, two, Stormy is doing well on this Hellcrit mid. We've seen a lot of Helga is not performing well even in the jungle. This is very impressive. But right now for the side of Homeboys, again, in terms of advantage, Orange is what has the clear advantage. But again, Homeboys, what they need is just a team fight because once everyone is collected, once everyone is together, once Homeboys actually execute their, their crowd control, uh, the, the, the chain of crowd control onto the key targets of Orange Sport. It's gonna be good, but no one is stopping Stormy. Stormy is up front. Stormy is pushing while everyone is focused here on the buff. Indeed, I don't actually know for sure who got that buff as well, but as the Dark Knight Falls drops again, Stormy not quite enough to finish off TB, but it's enough to scare the homeboys back and allow them to take the tier one mid tower. Questionable. Stormy was up top pushing and no one stopped him. That was a very free second tier turret. And that just gives more advantage for Orange Esports because by the time homeboys tried to protect it, the mid lane was vulnerable and then Orange got another turret because right now in terms of turret advantage, Orange has five, homeboys only has two. Yeah, they have much more control over the map. And if we look at the items right now, Stormy is having such a great time. Already three items complete on the Hellcurt in the mid lane, out farming even Chibi on this Hayabusa. So homeboys, they still need to be careful. They still have to care about the 1-1 one -one once the late game comes around too. Yeah, right now, homeboys, they're not really executing their, their, their combos. Again, we talked about how, how flashy combos can be, but actually executing it is a little bit difficult. And looking at the Lord push advantage, over that one Lord, Orange Esports got 22,000 uh, 22, damage onto the turrets. Which is, again, pretty amazing. Aim gonna do rough waves onto Subbot, but it does, be, it does look like he's building a tankier Julian here, so not even gonna pop the Immortality. That means that the rough waves will be down for a while. Stormy might be walking into a bad spot. The flicker forward from Expedia finds him with the Numenon Blast, but no one is near enough to actually follow up on that, so that might have been a wasted flicker here on the Lolita. No, yeah, I, I honestly feel he did not even need to use the Numenon Blast. I kind of feel like using the first kill stun and everyone initiating that might have been the better play. But right now, Subway managing to catch Expedia. Expedia is all alone. But look at Aim. Aim trying to get a kill on the back line. But Anip managing to survive as well as Subway. Homeboys, they oh. did kill it out. But Anip, Anip is focusing on to Valence. And Valence, low HP. Aim is still going for it. But that may be a mistake. Chibi got a kill onto Stormy. And Aim is going to get sacrificed as well. But overall, they still managed to get Anip, which is their key target. Neo is focusing on to Chibi. Chibi with the Quad Shadow is able to walk away. Balance is still alive. So overall, I would say it's still a win for Orange. 
hard to really say, but since that, they, since they have more map control, we can kind of chalk that up to a technicality since they will be in a better spot to start contesting this Lord. But this is a 4v3 right now. Homeboys want to contest this. A real one manipulation gonna get jumped on with the Falling Star Moon, and that means that Neo will be able to take Vin's out. He decides to sacrifice himself to delay Orange longer, but <gasps> Lumina Blast no! finds Doom! Valance isn't able to get off his crossbow of Tang! A beautiful play by Expedia! Neo, though, still doing a good job in the back line, gonna be forcing out Subbot to use that enhanced sword and popping the immortality. Subway's still alive in his 1v1 against Chibi, and Neo, his job is done. He's just pushing away from the Lord. Homeboys, though, still wanna try and contest this, but this Esmeralda has scaled up. Nothing is killing him. My jaw dropped. Valance was on the way of flying up high. But in the transition, he got hit by the Numinum Blast. Not only was he stunned, but he got a lot of damage. Like, he was basically like, like what, 10 HP? And then the rest of Homeboys just, just initiated. And right now, Stormy is in a bit of a pinch. But it looks like the Dark Knight Falls, he is able to run away. But overall, I would say kind of a lucky play by Expedia. But that still looked pretty cool. Yeah, the Dark Knight Frost has already been expended in order for Stormy to escape, so the homeboys don't actually have to worry about that too much if they want to challenge the Lord again. And Rough Waves has been wasted as well. Luminon Blast! Flicker forward gets two! Aim is already down. Subway jumping in with heavy spin. He's gonna give up on the Lord for now. And the crossbow of Tang is up! But he's gonna extend it onto Expedia instead. GB has already fallen. Stormy will find the Lolita as well. A nip taken out by Subway. Subbat, the only surviving member of the homeboys, is now formed members of RNG Sports wants to push in. They could end this game right now. The Julian is the only one defending. Dark Knight Falls will drop, but so will Subbat instantly falling to the burst damage from the Hellcurt. And we are going into yet another Game 3, ladies and gentlemen.